In this episode, we're taking a look at the changes in iMovie 10.1.2. These changes have made iMovie much easier to use for beginners without removing features you may have grown accustomed to. When you launch iMovie for the first time, you're now presented with the project window. This button should look very familiar if you're used to working in the iOS version of iMovie. Before you can begin creating a movie, the first step is to create a project. You can think of a project as the master blueprint for all your work in iMovie. Click the gray thumbnail, and you're asked if you want to create a movie or a trailer. I'll select Movie. The new project appears at the top of the libraries list. There are two important differences between iMovie 10.1.2 and previous versions. For one, you are no longer presented with a themes browser. Instead, the project opens directly, and you can immediately begin creating your movie. Don't worry, the themes browser is not gone. I'll show you how to access it shortly. The other change is that your project is named automatically for you. If you want to save your project using a different name, click the Projects button. You'll then be prompted to save your project. I'll name this one Kate's First Dive and click OK. Notice we're now back in the Projects browser, where we have the option to open the project we just saved or create a new one. I'll open the one I just saved by double-clicking its thumbnail. You're now ready to import media in the normal manner. Notice the timeline now includes instructions as to what to do next. The next new feature is that clicking a clip in the browser selects the entire clip instead of a range. You can still select a range if you'd like by pressing and holding the R key and then dragging out a range. Alternatively, you can skim or play the clip and press I to set an endpoint and O to set an out point. Adding clips or clip ranges to your timeline hasn't changed. You can click the plus button on the clip thumbnail, drag and drop, or use the familiar keyboard shortcuts that you can find under the edit menu. E to add, Q to connect, and W to insert. Once you have clips assembled in the timeline, you no longer have to click the top half of a clip to select it. Clicking anywhere within the clip boundary selects the entire clip. Just as with clips in the browser, you can select a range on a timeline clip by pressing and holding the R key and dragging out a range, or by skimming or playing the clip and using the I and O keys to set the in and out points respectively. You can then adjust the range using the drag handles that appear. Once you've set a range, right-clicking on it reveals a pop-up menu where you can choose to cut, copy, delete, or my favorite, trim the clip to the range. Finally, if you want to apply a theme to your project or change an applied theme, you now click the Settings button at the top right of the timeline. From here, you can choose a theme, select a project filter, and make a few other choices. That's it, a few simple changes to make iMovie more accessible to beginners without removing any of the functionality you may be used to. If you want to learn more about iMovie, check out our Lessons for iMovie app in the Mac App Store. Go to rippletraining.com to see our full library of iMovie and Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials.